A Perfect Fit, How Lena Lane Bryant Changed the Shape of Fashion by Mara Rockliffe, illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. Lena's family was not as large as others in the village, but for her, it was the perfect fit. Her grandfather taught her to read and write. Her grandmother taught her to drape and snip and stitch. Lena loved her grandparents. Still, life was hard. She dreamed of following her older sister to America. In America, there was no czar to say that Jewish children couldn't go to school. In America, a girl like Lena could work hard and earn success. Success, how would it look? As elegant as lace? How would it feel? As comfortable as silk? Certainly it wouldn't squeeze and pinch like being poor. Her grandfather smiled. If she could help another person, he told Lena, that would be real success. When Lena was 16, some distant relatives offered to take her with them to America. Lena sewed herself a special outfit for the journey. After many long days on the rough ocean, they arrived at last and Lena found out that the relatives expected her to marry their son. Lena told them she would pay back every penny for her ticket, but she would only marry when she found a perfect fit. In New York, Lena's sister helped her find a job, sewing from dawn till dusk for $1 a week. Lena could not believe her luck. Lace, ribbons, silk, most wonderful of all, sewing machines. Lena worked hard and learned fast. Soon, she earned $5 a week, then 10, then more. She saved enough to pay the relatives back for her ticket to America. She even found time for English lessons, and she studied fashion in the magazines and on the streets. At a lecture, Lena met an older man named David Bryant, he was elegant, yet comfortable, a perfect fit. Lena and David were happy together. They had a baby. But soon after, David suddenly got sick and died. Other than a pair of diamond earrings, David's wedding gift, Lena had nothing left. She pawned her earrings, using the money to buy a sewing machine, and set to work. Lena had never used a pattern or a tape measure, she simply draped and snipped and stitched. Yet somehow, Lena's gowns fit better than those made by anybody else. One day, a customer came in with an unusual request. She was going to have a baby. Could Lena make a gown that would grow bigger with her belly so that it would never squeeze or pinch? Lena had never heard of such a thing. Who had? But she remembered her grandfather's words. Here was a chance to help another person through her work. So she draped and snipped and stitched and made a gown of silk and lace with room to grow. It was elegant, it was comfortable, and it was a success. Soon, Lena had to rent a bigger shop and hire more people to help her sew. She even went to open up a bank account. The big fancy bank made her so nervous, she mixed up the English letters of her name. Instead of Lena, she signed Lane, Lane Bryant. Now there were bigger, faster sewing machines that could make dozens of dresses at a time. Instead of having a dress made to order, women could simply walk into a store and pick one out. There was just one problem. All the dress patterns were the same shape, but all women were not. Lena got to work. She draped, she snipped, and the big fast machines stitched elegant, comfortable clothes that didn't squeeze or pinch. Everyone said Lena was a great success. And when she thought about her grandfather, she knew that it was true. Author's note, Lena Himmelstein was born in 1879 in Rietavas, Lithuania. Her mother died 10 days later, and Lena and her older sister Annie were raised by their grandparents. 
Russian persecution and a lack of opportunities for Jews led first Annie, then Lena, to escape to the United States. As a teenage immigrant, Lena worked with her sister in a sweatshop on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Despite the long hours and low pay, she was ecstatic over the loveliness of lace and ribbon trimmings, as she later recalled, and quickly learned to use that fabulous wonder, the sewing machine. In 1899, she married David Bryant, a jeweler who died soon after the birth of their son, Raphael. Working with the baby on her lap, she sewed dresses for wealthy customers, which she delivered personally to their homes, often waiting hours to be paid so she could buy more fabric. I had a hunger for beautiful things, she once told an interviewer. I wanted to do fine sewing on fine materials. I would search through the stores for bits of remnants of fine satins and crepes and bits of lace, which I could pick up for a few cents. Lena's business grew through word of mouth, especially after she created an expandable maternity dress for a customer who did not want to sit at home alone simply because she had nothing presentable to wear. Lena's second husband, Albert Molson, joined her in running the business, and she continued to work after the births of their three children, Theodore, Helen, and Arthur. Responding to complaints from customers who couldn't find comfortable, stylish clothes, Albert collected thousands of women's measurements, from which Lena designed clothing for different body types. Lane Bryant became famous for introducing what would later be known as plus-size fashions, eventually also adding clothing for tall and petite women. Lena's company was one of the first to offer employee benefits, including health coverage, pensions, and profit sharing, along with scholarships and life insurance. Customers who lost their wardrobes in disasters, such as tornadoes and fires, were sent free replacements. And after World War II, Lane Bryant stores shipped clothing by the ton to European refugees. By the time of Lena's death in 1951, the company employed thousands of workers in its mail order business and stores across the country. Lane Bryant stayed in the family until 1982, when it was sold to a company called The Limited. As of 2021, it had changed hands several times and was owned by Premium Apparel LLC. All her life, Lena recalled her grandfather, a rabbi, saying, any work that helps another human being has dignity. The only real success comes from filling a human need. She saw people as the best part of her work, along with silk and lace.